uh, welcome to my channel and uh, to another video. I was recently uploading content related to psychosomatic conditions and um, I, I explained, I'll link you down below the video that I, that I recorded last weekend. Um, I tried to make the connection between mm, anorexia nervosa, which is the condition that I used to suffer from for 13 years, and um and psychosomatic um conditions and and my my idea of anorexia now as as stands is that it was a very extreme form of psychosomatic development in in my own life and um there's there's now just around 100 videos on my channel i when I inaugurated this uh, project half a year ago as a series of self-portraits, I said I was going to try and look at eating disorders and specifically anorexia because I, I didn't suffer from any other variation of an eating disorder, um, but I was going to look at it from a multidisciplinary lens as much as is possible and always based on my own experience. And in the last couple of weeks, I was able to consult literature that I have found to be very informative. And, and I wanted to share a bit of reading that I was um, recently coming across. As I said, I will link you the video down in the description box on um, on my topic of psychosomatic conditions from uh, last week. And today I just wanted to read out an excerpt from a book that I got in the uh, library of the Freud Museum in Vienna, which, as I recently said, has a very interesting collection of books that go beyond the clinical and academic literature on psychoanalysis. They have a whole section dedicated to psychoanalysis and film. And I had picked out this book, uh, which is called Projected Shadows. And it, uh, it was published by the new library of psychoanalysis with its seat in, in London. So the, the publisher is uh, Rutledge. I'll, I'll leave you the description of that, of this book um, in, in the description box as well. I, I was very surprised because there's, there's really a lot of content in this book and uh, mind you, I have to repeat, I'm neither a doctor nor a nutritionist nor a psychologist nor a psychoanalyst, but I have found there to be quite a few analogies between the way I work as an artist and an educator in, in museums and some of the professions I just uh, listed. And I was um, happily surprised, happily is a bit of a, a wrong word to use because the content of, of what I was uh, happy to, to find is, is really quite grim, but I was happy to find uh, that there, A, that there was a, a film made about an aspect of anorexia that I found to be very informative, but it's very grim. So I, I will just mention what this film is, what story that is based on. I will not go into it just yet because I think I need to prepare for that kind of content. But I was happy to find that two Italian psychoanalysts have been uh, collaborating to put together this chapter in in this book uh, projected uh, projected shadows on psychoanalysis and uh, and film and so the the essay or the contribution by the two italians called maria vittoria costantini and also paola golinelli is um is called the anorexic paradox and as, as soon as i saw that title i just thought that must that's definitely worth a read I have been discussing um, the, the sort of counterproductivity of anorexia um, because it is, it is geared towards destruction, self-destruction. It is geared towards uh, self-annihilation. And so in that sense, it's, it's a form of perversion in its most extreme sense because it, it is something that feeds on uh, the, the irony or the paradox here is that the condition anorexia feeds on wanting to uh, live, but 
in order to feel alive, arriving at a point that is not sustainable health-wise. Um, and so I was automatically drawn by the title, as, as you might be able to imagine. And I thought I was going to read out, um, it was a couple of pages long, so I'm not going to go into the uh, film analysis that Golinelli and Costantini are writing about, but I wanted to read out something wherein the word somatic uh, comes up as well as a link to the video that I recorded last, um, last weekend. And so um, I'm, I'm reading out from The Anorexic Paradox. Um, it is the skin, the flesh, the body as a whole, as the seat of both senses and affects that first accomplishes the world and remains marked by it. So in this sense, sorry, I should perhaps have started with a, with a sentence before. Um, Golinelli and Costantini are already referring to the film, so I'll just mention the film, but as I said, I won't go into it. So they write, with reference to Matteo Garrone's intensely dramatic film, First Love, in Italian it's called Primo, Primo Amore, we will be focusing on the representation of the exhausting struggle between the need for control over emotions and the libidinal expression of the body. It is the skin, the flesh, the body as a whole, as the seat of both senses and affects that first accomplishes the world and remains marked by it. The history of every individual develops from the relationship with the mother's body, a unique bond of which both parties retain a memory in the flesh. <clears throat> Mother and baby co-penetrate, united in an embrace which gives a special significance to both. The signs of that primary relation are, for the most part, unconscious, not in the sense of repressed, but forming part of the memory, which is called implicit or procedural, and which we might call somatic, as it is inscribed in that individual's body and constitutes his or her individuality and otherness. It's a bit dark here now. Uh, the sense of this primary relation imbues all subsequent relations, which are thus affected by the corporeal imprint, since in the initial stages of development, object relations and corporeal experience coincide. And there's a reference to uh, Freud, <clears throat> as they write, in Inhibitions, Symptoms and Anxiety, Freud in 1925 wrote that the word is born from the flesh. What we carry in our bodies is our flesh, i.e. the primordial affective experience. Metaphorically speaking, writes Racalbuto in 94, I would venture to call this type of knowledge carnal knowledge, which is also the title of a Mike Nichols film uh, from 1971. It is the basis for what first constitutes psychic reality, Reality accomplished through affective sensations, the front and back door of the emotions, the source of sensations. Man's body is history incarnate. And then there's just a bit more reference about uh, Marco Garone but, uh, and his film, The, um, the Anorexic, uh, sorry, the, the Primo Amore, the, the First Love, which is then the, the film that this body is, um, is sorry, this essay is uh, based on. Maybe I'll just read this quickly. Through his films, especially L'Imbalsamatore, so that translates into The Embalmer from 2002 and Primo Amore from 2004, Matteo Garrone deals masterfully with the theme of the body. It becomes the battleground which by eliminating all that represents the libidinal and emotional sexual aspects of the body, aims at nullifying the affective dimension which the subject paradoxically perceives as the greatest threat to his or her self-integrity. Um, yeah, so that last part is quite, it, it's very dense and it's, it's what, I, what I was going to say a bit. Uh, a bit heavy to, to deal with and to deal through. I will come back to it, but once I have structured my thoughts around it, but it's really the, the term that fell um, somatic that I found was, uh, was interesting in relation to the 
the co-penetration of the bodies between the mother and the baby in, in her womb as it is created and then forms uh, during, during the nine months of pregnancy. Um, because I was already, when I started my channel and, and already years before that actually, I was wondering whether there still seems to be no definitive clinical answer to that question either. I was myself wondering to what extent uh, the development of an eating disorder, or for that matter anorexia, specifically could be um, genetic or inborn, and that my idea of genetic or inborn in, in this passage that I just read was uh, defined as somatic or implicit or procedural as Golini and Costantini wrote. And I found that interesting because it means that, or it sort of further emphasizes the fact that um, in case you are still wondering about that and in case you are in an environment that might accuse you of being of being capricious or, or of not being disciplined and, and blames you for having an eating disorder, that that sort of is by now really universally accepted, that it's not something you can blame anybody who suffers from an eating disorder for. It's never a choice. There's always a reason or, or a, multi a multiplicity of reasons that lead to the outbreak of those uh, disordered symptoms. And, and I found it interesting that in this particular um, text excerpt that I was reading out, there was a very sort of an, an image that comes to mind, and that is the, the, the two bodies intertwined, the, the baby body or the baby that is not yet a being and is being created over, over a nine month period within the womb of, of the mother. And I was wondering to what extent um, the genes of the mother or even the mood of the mother or the um, current living condition of the mother could be directly affecting the body of the baby. So let's say if, um, I don't know, I, I tried talking to, to my mom about that, that there seems to have been no traumatic or difficult phase for her during those nine months of pregnancy. But I'm just wondering whether that could be one of the reasons that if a mother is under particular stress, say maybe because she has to work a lot um, during her pregnancy, whether that sense of agitation can be transferred to the to the baby in the womb and whether this somatic um, experience then accounts for potential disorders later in life so that's one thought that I had and um, and then the other very very clear imagery that this um, this uh, text excerpt gives me is is what I often talk about on my on my channel and that is the skin. I last week mentioned that I myself suffered from um, what's the English word for it? Uh, it it's a kind of skin rash. Uh, neurodermitis is the would be the translation from from German, um, which is essentially uh, an an itch that can be so strong that causes you to scratch yourself until you bleed and I. When I was uh, a baby, um, up until I was five, was really suffering from these severe itches. And then my, my uh, dermatologist pres prescribed cream that fixed that condition. But it came back to me um, when I was 20, when my grandmother died and I was under severe stress. And, uh, and in the past book that I was reading out to you on my channel last week, the Revolt of the Body by Alice Miller, but also um, Edward Shorter's From Mind into the Body. Both these books were dealing, uh, even if just tangentially, with the subject of, of the skin and how stress and other difficult situations that individuals may find themselves in, whether consciously or subconsciously, can manifest uh, in, in, uh, in the complexion. Um, 
often it's it's a cause of hormones which explains why especially adolescents tend to uh, suffer from from uh, breaking out but then that sort of equ generally equals itself out and uh, and you end up having um, less less uh, less pimples for instance but uh, there's kinds of skin conditions like rosacea which is something else that i have or ha i have a tendency to uh, to have um, keeps coming back to you in life based on uh, stress rather than hormones. Often these are intertwined, but I have found that in extreme situations of stress, my body reacts uh, today, not so much with the coping mechanism of anorexia, but um, with, with nervous itches, sorry, nervous rashes and, and, um, and rosacea. So I have an overlap of uh, two, anomalies of, of my skin tissue that then change uh, the surface of my body, so the skin. And I found it interesting how in, in this essay, the, um, the anorexic paradox, Golini and Costantini mention skin and flesh. And, um, and it also, I'm, I'm almost done now because I just wanted to give you an, an introduction to one of the interdisciplinary ways of looking at anorexia, in this case through psychoanalysis and film, that I found to be very helpful. And um, uh, what I, the note, I perhaps now I lost what I wanted to say, as, as usually happens. Um, what I found to be interesting is how oh yes the, the 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 subject of skin and flesh and the incarnation of experience as experience that then manifests at different stages and sometimes recurringly in life in in the way that our body looks so in our musculature um, perhaps it's cramps or in our skin and perhaps it's rashes um, I was interested in that because um, what I read out to you brings back um, a YouTube video that I saw a couple of months back by by someone I very much like listening to. This is uh, Bessel van der Kolk, um, a Dutch um, analyst. I think I, that's not a reductive term. I don't think he's a, uh, a psychiatrist, but um, he's made he's he's been lecturing on the subject of trauma and how the body. Um, expresses repressed trauma and there's one video in particular that is called the body keeps the score and and the way he phrases that the body keeps the score seems analogous to how I often talk about the body as a palimpsest as as an entity that has lived through things that have been registered by the body on the surface perhaps so um, uh, let's say the skin and the muscles uh, right underneath that, but that really that uh, score is much deeper. That palimpsest is is much more profound because it also that experience that perhaps was registered by the body also filtered through into the core and sort of becomes an an all embracing on the surface experience, but one that we also store. In, in our minds and there's there's a there's then that connection to how psychoanalysis tends to work or how even Freud himself talked about his his practice and and in part explains why he was such an avid collector and student of um, of archaic Greece and had a huge collection of antique sculptures because he often was uh, was known for saying that his practice so the the search deep into the mind or deep into individuals experiences um, was in a way a form of archaeology that he was digging deep in um, in in the mind and in, in order to arrive at the unconscious like an archaeologist would dig uh, deep to find artifacts from antiquity and so I find it interesting how his practice developed um, 
in part as uh, as his formation as a doctor and a, and a surgeon um but also with the awareness and and his very sophisticated uh, sophisticated scholarship um around archaeology um and and this this combination this interdisciplinary approach of freud's that then gave birth to psychoanalysis um, it's getting really dark now here because it's it's winter and so I'm, I'm I'm fading into the dark as I speak so I just I'll, I'll finish this off but I hope that this was useful in some way um, if you have any questions please let me know and um, with with time I um, I will get back to the film that was mentioned by the two authors Costantini and Golini but as I said it's really it's it's quite hard to stomach. Um, if you want to do your own research, I'll leave you down below the uh, couple of links that relate to the real life events that have led to the film Primo Amore or First Love. But uh, this is a trigger warning. If you want to see that film or read the book that it's based on, um, do so at your own peril because i i was really shaken when i when i looked into it um and there's parts there that i need to still figure out uh so that's it for uh now if you have questions as i said welcome to ask any time bye and stay safe